everyone. Welcome to JGK Master Class. Guys, today we are going to learn about chemical shift value calculation in proton NMR. And this topic is on demand, so I am just uh, doing the calculations related to it. Hope you will understand it and it will be useful for you. So, chemical shift represented by del symbol and it, the unit is in ppm. So, what is chemical shift? Basically, the chemical shift depends in the molecule on the chemical environment and arise because of the shielding and de-shielding of the protons by electrons in the proton NMR. So, first of all, for this video to understand, I hope you have learned about this topic. You have a knowledge of what is shielding, what is de-shielding of proton in NMR. Then you can go ahead with this video. Otherwise, you should learn first what is shielding and de-shielding mechanism and then you find the calculation related to chemical shift. So basically, the chemical shift value is independent of the field strength. As we know, our molecule is placed in the magnetic field environment. And because of that, uh, the electron rotation occurs around the center of the nucleus and you find the displacement of the proton because of this electronic environment, either downfield or upfield shift. So, this shift we will see in the diagram, diagram also. So, first the example chemical shift value which is let's say is given 4.6 and it is independent of the field strength means whatever field strength you select, whatever is the operational frequency you have, the chemical shift value remains the same. So, you can notice here if you are working on the 60 megahertz NMR at the magnetic field is 1.4 tesla, the chemical shift you are getting 4.6 and the same chemical shift you will get if you work on 600 megahertz NMR at 14.1 tesla instrument which is giving you high resolution NMR. So, chemical shift is not going to change whatever operational frequency or the instrument you are going to work. So, the formula to calculate which we will use is the chemical shift is equal to shift in the hertz from the TMS. TM is a tetramethyl silane, which is a standard indicator we use here. Internal standard, you can say it's an internal standard. And again, you have to study about this. So I hope you have already learned about this internal standard. Divided by spectrometer frequency megahertz NMR. Like here you have 60 megahertz. Or 600 megahertz this is the spectrometer frequency and the shift we are talking about so much you can see this is in general the proton NMR you have the values for proton NMR starting from 0 to 11 here and TMS uh, tetramethyl silane which is the internal standard we use here because its chemical shift value is 0 so all the shift we are going to study with respect to TMS only and here you can see one example is giving CdCl3 chloroform. The shift from the TMS is given here and the chemical shift value is also indicated here. 7.3 for the chloroform and the shift we will measure in hertz so that we will see further in numerical. So if the chemical shift value is decreasing that is called upfield shift or the you can see the proton is shielded or if the chemical shift value is increasing then we say it is a downfield shift or we can say the protons are de-shaded. Okay, so we will, uh, as you can see here, the complete diagram, the intensity of the peak is given here and the chemical shift is recorded in ppm. So we will see now, we will use this formula to calculate the chemical shift value. The very first problem is the proton resonance of chloroform was measured at 1460 hertz downfield of TMS. Just now we have seen the scale downfield of TMS 1460 hertz in 200 megahertz NMR spectrometer. What is the chemical shift value? Very straightforward question. So we know the formula shift in the hertz from the TMS is given 1460 and a spectrometer frequency is given 200 megahertz. You just have to put this and you will get the chemical shift value. So basically, whenever you submit your sample, you get a spectrum, right? You will get a peak there and the frequency will be mentioned. How much is the shift you are getting from TMS? That's it. And you know what is the frequency you are operating? On which frequency you are operating a molecule? Same you have to place here. 
So if you put this, you can find the chemical shift value. Similarly, in the same question, if you continue and they ask you what is the separation of chloroform resonance from TMS, basically separation of chloroform resonance from TMS means they are asking the shift in hertz from TMS in a 60 megahertz spectrometer. So they are asking you the shift in the hertz of from the TMS at 60 megahertz NMR. And just now we have calculated the chemical shift value which is 7.3 which is independent of the operational frequency or the instrumental frequency or you can say the field strength. So we will put in the above formula 7.3 ppm is equal to shift in hertz from the TMS which you have to calculate divided by 60 megahertz and you will get the value. The separation is 438 hertz. So you can notice one thing. As you are decreasing the frequency from 200 to 60 megahertz, the shift also got decreased from 1460 to 438 hertz, right? So, why we go for the higher resolution or a high megahertz instrument? Because you get the wider separation from the TMS. And so, you can see the coupling uh, between the signals easily compared to the low resolution instrument that is low frequency instrument 438 hertz chemical shift value remains the same one more numerical we will solve the OS signal at 144 hertz higher frequency than TMS how many chemical shift units in ppm does this record so basically the operational frequency is given here 60 megahertz we know the formula so here what they are asking, chemical shift value to calculate, shift in the hertz from TMS is given 144 and spectrometer frequency is given 60. Just have to place it, you will get the chemical shift value for the above experiment for OH signal. And so you might have observed the complete chemical shift value table for the different functional group. So you can easily calculate if you are aware of the shift in the hertz. From the TMS and the operational frequency, you can easily calculate the chemical shift value. We'll see one more example here in the form of table. You can see the strength of the field. For example, we are talking about the bromoform as an example. So the operational, this magnetic field strength is given 1.41 Tesla. In other case, you are changing it to 2.35 Tesla. Operational frequency which is dependent on magnetic field. Operational frequency is directly proportional to the magnetic field. So here it is 60 megahertz and here as you are increasing the magnetic field, the frequency also increases to 100 megahertz. So it depends. There are two instruments. One is having this set of uh, frequency and uh, magnetic field. The other is having B0, 2.35 and 100 megahertz instrument. Now you are getting shift from... Uh, TMS in each case different. If you have low resolution, that is 60, you have the shift less from TMS, that is 162 hertz. If you are increasing the frequency to 100, you will get the shift more, that is 270 hertz. But the chemical value remains the same. You put in the formula 162 divided by 60, you will get 2.7 or you do the same here. That 270 divided by 100, you will get 2.7. So you can, this is a proof that chemical shift value doesn't change with the magnetic field or with the operational frequency or instrumental frequency. Only what is going to change? The shift from the TMS is going to change. And so we always prefer to go for the higher frequency instrument. We also call it high resolution instrument because the spread is better there, you can find the coupling between signals clearly and so you can find the first order spectrum in that high resolution instrument. So guys, if you haven't seen the first order, second order spectra, I will share the link in the description box so you can go ahead with this video also. Till then, happy learning.